Another new feature we have in Howler 8 is a updated browser. Previously it was implemented as a plugin and it has now been integrated. It is also much faster than before. It'll load um, load your images much more quickly in most cases. Um, also there's the ability to spawn new browsers. Uh, previously it would open another plugin and now it's all done internally. You can, um, of course, open multiple copies of a browser and copy files back and forth between them. Say you had several, several uh, different folders and you wanted to copy files back and forth. That's easy enough to comp accomplish. Just using drag and drop. Whoops. Allow me to open an image and I'll demonstrate a few more things here. Having a faster browser really makes it much more easy and much more quick to uh, load in those hundreds of thumbnails from those, all those photographs I've taken recently. Uh, this spring and the, all the flowers and everything. Let me shrink this down a little bit to make it a little easier to work with. This is a fairly large file. And I'm on a laptop running it on battery power at the moment. Look at that stylized tool. As you can see, I talked about that uh, that new uh, multiply original parameter. And basically what that does is say if, if this was a layer, it would uh, multiply that using a, a layer mode, the multiply layer mode. It'd be just like doing that on top of the image. So you can actually keep the original colors of that image intact if you wanted to, or, or a certain amount thereof. So it's one useful way of maintaining those original colors, or as much of them as you wanted to anyways. I talked about the specular, and that specular height, changing this texture height will really help you control that amount of specular that you're using on there. And you can get some very, uh, like uh, this had been frosted over with ice or, or waxed over or something, you get, or maybe plastic wrap had been put over it. You get some very unique looking uh, embossed looks or, or 3D uh, texture looks using this tool. And uh, as always, adding more than one light, different colored lights can be really help improve the realism of this uh, substantially. Changing the amount of specular for each light, that kind of thing can really help a lot too. Say uh, this first light had been the direct sunlight, this second light might be uh, the sky or something, and it wouldn't have a, uh, a real sharp gloss. It would be really diffused like that, for example. Um, and that's just a few of the kind of things you can do with that tool now. Um, we've made a number of new changes in the program. Uh, one of them is the ability to scale a custom brush, or well, we could do that before, obviously, but we've changed the panel. So let me, I've just picked up a random uh, brush image there to use as a custom brush, and I'll just show that now. The brush resample now has the ability to uh, not only type in a arbitrary uh, scale or arbitrary size, which you could always do. But you can also constrain that. So if say you wanted three, you know, a, a particular screen size, and to keep the same aspect ratio, you could always do that, of course. But now there's the ability to change the scale. Uh, by typing in a number and it doesn't have to be it can be graded in 100 it can be graded in 200 it can be 1000 if you wanted that's a fairly large brush mind you so I'm gonna type in you know 201 just to so you, you can do it or you can uh, multiply it by 2 or divide it by 2 and uh, those, those are just a few of the new features of being able to resample a brush so now that's created a very large brush for me And there have been a few smaller changes as well. One is the ability to have an emergency, emergency save uh, when you have a stored brush or a stored image. Um, as Phillips like, likes to do, he likes to store a copy of all his, uh, his brushes and images. And I, I tend to do that as well. Uh, you can store a brush either as a brush or as an image. 
and uh, storing it in, as an image. will be the same as say you had an image here and you just went to image and store so it's just the same same thing only you're only storing that part of the image from the brush instead of the whole image but um, once you've stored that you have some options here of how to how to uh, reapply that say replacing the ex existing image or the YUV channels or whatever but now there's a new option called the emergency save now say the uh, the main program had crashed and went away and we were left with just the uh, just these um, just these plugins I know it sounds crazy but it has happened and it's a it would be a really good thing to just be able to go in and, and save that uh, since you still had this copy this stored image still uh, there and it now has that emergency save option so that's one little thing we've added in Heller 8 um, oh, that also reminds me, there have been some new changes to controls. Uh, when you click on a drop down, a drop slider, there's now uh, not only arrow keys or arrow buttons that you can control, but there's also keyboard input. You can use the left and right arrow key, and the uh, up key will shut, uh, will close that um, drop slider as well. And those are a few changes we made to our interface as well. One of our big pushes in Haller 8 was to integrate a number of plugins that were formerly uh, slow or, or quirky or difficult to use. And we've, we've changed and converted a number of these plugins into C and internalized them. Uh, a good example would be the um, Z Rings plugin. Uh, this was formerly uh, two separate plugins that are now integrated into a single internal filter. And they basically let you create a marble-like pattern or something to that effect. There's a lot of uh, new parameters there as well. Uh, this was formally implemented as two separate plugins, and they didn't have uh, many controls that you could work with. So that's just one of the things we changed, um, along with a number of other filters, uh, such as the brick texture. Excuse me, the crystallize filter um, was one of them as well, which I accidentally clicked on there brick texture as I was saying you can is now uh, much more real-time uh, easier to use easier to select the colors you want that sort of thing um, there have been a lot of changes like that say the uh, multi-color filter and the duotone and the tritone filter rather multicolor I believe has been renamed tritone uh, to be because it's similar to the duotone filter let's see let me see give an example that say we just had uh, some fractal noise or something in there adjust color tritone and this basically lets you change um, the first color would be like the light color and this last color would be the very darkest colors so say we wanted the dark colors to be sort of a blue shade all we had to do is click on that and uh, you see what I mean is the first two are light colors and the second one is getting sort of a blue a bluish in the middle if you change the middle, that'll change these the grayish colors, and if you change the the top one, that will change the the lightest number of colors. There's also a uh, attribute at the top that preserves the luminance, or or just does a multiply type of effect, uh, and and that's something that's been updated as well, uh, just basically to work faster, to be more reliable. Um, there were some quirks with the uh, the plug-in interface, that sort of thing. So we've just gone ahead and overhauled it, rewritten it. Uh, a number of things like that. The sunset sunset filter has been rewritten uh, in C. Now uses multi threading and it, all the uh, all the types of things you would expect it to do. Fish eye is much faster now. A lot of plugins have been uh, treated this way. Day for night. Uh, sorry, not day for night. Um, the soft contrast filter is much more interactive. It has a better quality uh, overall appearance. It works more quickly now. And let's see. Crystallize is one that's been updated quite a bit. Not only is it uh, about 10 times faster now, but also has a new parameter, a shade parameter, which gives you sort of a, a cathedral look, or what do you call it, a stained glass window. There's also some new parameters on there. 
um, and that was a sort of an offshoot of our uh, cellular plugin, which has also been internalized. Checkerboard is a, another one that's been updated. It's not only real time, uh, or at least much faster than it was, it's also got a new uh, linked parameter where you can change the uh, aspect ratio of the, of the checkerboard. Uh, entering colors is much more quick. Uh, you can also bring up the uh, the color picker and that sort of thing by clicking on these icons over here. And there are a few more like that as well, I believe. Um, the grid texture now. Let's see, let me clear this. Say you needed a, a just a nice grid uh, for for whatever reason. For a drawing reference, you need to print it out, print out some graph paper or whatever. Uh, this has, this is not only much more interactive, but it also has a, also has a thickness parameter as well now, and uh, that just makes it a lot, lot nicer in general. Uh, and these are not the, you know, gonna catch the world on fire as we're gonna say kind of tools. These are the just day in day out. Uh, let's get, let's get our work done uh, uh, without being bothered. <laughs> kind of tools and they're just a lot easier to use and and a lot less hassle than they were formerly uh, the motion prediction module uh, is something we promoted a lot in version 7.2 it has also been updated um, to use multi-threading more thoroughly uh, it is much faster now it is also um, been uh, had some some small tweaks made to it uh, um, Philip has gone over that a hundred times at least by now, <laughs> and uh, I'll just uh, move on from there and, and let him. Uh, well, I'm sure you've already seen it a hundred times by now. And uh, continuing our desire to uh, integrate more fully our tool set, uh, we've integrated the gradient editor. It is now um, a little, little less flaky before. It would uh, say you you scaled the window down. The the gradient editor would still. Um, still be visible and that's something that's been taken care of by integrating it and there's some uh, other advantages as well and um, that's just one of the, one more thing we've done it's also a little bit faster than before um, a lot of tools have been like uh, treated that way just trying to make them as, as user-friendly as possible as consistent and uh, as reliable as we could make them without having a uh, little gotchas in there uh, by getting away from plugins as much as possible uh, scripts uh, and that sort of that uh, that sort of thing.